Hey, I'm Grant, and I am back with my top five games of the month. This is for September. Summer is over, but that doesn't matter when you're inside playing games. So many good games this month. Here we go. The Spill is a game about saving sea life from the oil in an oil spill. And I'm really glad that we're at a point in the board game hobby and industry where themes like this can exist, you know? It's not just about exploiting your neighbor for their money or killing an orc. No, we're at a point where important real world themes exist in board games. And I think that's really cool. And the theme of this game and the implementation of that theme is definitely the reason you're going to want to play the spill. That's what makes it unique as a game. It feels very cooperative, which that's what cleaning up an oil spill has to be too, you know? You are rushing around a board trying to contain the oil and save the wildlife. It's got a lot of table presence because there is a you know, big oil rig tower in the middle of the board and you drop dice down that and it goes all over the place. That four-way dice tower though definitely means there is a healthy amount of luck in the game. You know, you, if all of the dice are falling into one region just randomly, then you might, you know, you might get overloaded and you might lose the game. But one of the things I've liked the most about it is that the game does feel tense. Every time I've played it, it's come down to the end and we're sort of either going to win or lose on the last turn of the game. And I like that there really is this challenge and tension to the game. I mean, that's, a, that's fun where you don't know what's going to happen down to the end and then everybody feels super happy and proud when we're like, no, nah, we did it. We contained the oil. We did. Ah, yeah, look at us. We're... We're environmentalists in the world, but probably should do more in our lives. Global warming, ha <laughs> ha don't, don't let the sad thoughts in. Now, I don't think The Spill is a perfect game. Um, there's some components and some rules in it that feel like they're just extra. You know, there are these weather dice that you add to the bag, and it's a lot of extra rules for the game, and I oftentimes see like one or two weather dice come out in an entire game and it's like really do was the were those extra rules worth having this component that's almost never seen in the game but overall i really like it and i really like the theme and and i feel like we should hear from an actual environmentalist about it oh i love that there's a game about saving trees no this is a game about saving animals well i love that there's a game about saving animals wait are there animals that die in this game Nope, no animals die, they just go to sick bay. Oh, good! I don't think I'd be able to handle that! My number four is Rear Window, and this is a game based on the old Alfred Hitchcock movie called, surprise, Rear Window. Now, you don't have to have seen the movie to enjoy this game. I've never seen the movie before, and guess what? This game made my top five games of September video that's happening right now. So proof that you don't have to see the movie to enjoy this game. Rear Window is a sometimes cooperative game. And the way that is accomplished is throughout the game, one player plays as the director and every other player plays as a team trying to figure out what the director is doing. The director has a hidden solution board, which essentially has for people and attributes for the windows and everybody else is trying to figure out what are those people and attributes in the windows. Uh, but when, when you mix all of the tiles together, one of those tiles is a murder tile. And then the director picks four random ones to put on their solution board. If the murder tile happens to be one of those four, well, then the director is trying to trick the other players. But if the murder tile isn't amongst those four, then it is a fully cooperative game where the director is trying to give clues to get everybody to guess correctly who is in the windows. And that sort of potential sabotage really makes this game have a, a little bit of a, a juicy strategic extraness to it that it wouldn't otherwise have. Because, you know, you are, as you're playing the game, 
there's always this little voice in the back of your head that's like, wait, is he bad at giving us clues or is in, he intentionally trying to trick us right now? I don't know what's going on. I feel like this is who we're supposed to put in that window, but maybe, just maybe, he's intentionally trying to sabotage the game from the director position. And it just, I don't know, I, I like that little extra layer of, of uh, you know, unknown in the game. If you like a game like Mysterium, this game feels like Mysterium, but with a, a potential murder and, and hidden traitor sort of aspect of it. And it's interesting because the hidden traitor is not, you know, no person is playing as the hidden traitor. There is a tile that is essentially making the game have a hidden traitor. And so I, I love the sometimes cooperative, sometimes not aspect of the game. It's super fun. I want to throw it over to Carl's corner and hear his thoughts on the game. Why did you cut to me when you brought up a game about murder? Uh, I, honestly, uh, no reason. I just thought you might like the game. Why did you cut to me when you brought up a game about murder? No, there, there was nothing behind it. I just, just wanted to get your thoughts on a rear window. I have lots of thoughts about the game. Any thoughts? It has murder in it. Okay. Okay. If you're looking for a filler game or a last game of the night type of thing, Bag of Chips is so much fun. I didn't think much of this game. You know, I mean, the whole selling point is that it looks like it comes in a bag of chips. You know, ooh, big deal. That's a gimmick. I don't fall for gimmicks. I'm a gamer. Is there a good game inside? Get your gimmicks out of here. But this game is very easy to travel with, so I threw it in my bag when I was going on a trip in September, just kind of being like, well, let's see what I have. And then getting it to the table, everybody has enjoyed it so much. This game is surprisingly fun. One of my buddies said it perfectly where he was like, this game is more fun than it has any right to be. And I totally agree with that. You, I can see so many people passing this game by, but if you want a push your luck, just sort of gambling type of game, this is one of my new favorite ones in that type of genre. You are pulling chips from the bag and everybody starts with six objective cards and you are essentially sloughing off objective cards trying to come down to two that are actually gonna hit for you. And whoever hits on their objective cards gets a couple of chip tokens, first person to four tokens wins the game. So it's very simple and easy to teach, but it has these big emotional moments where, you know, oh, I'm betting on there being uh, four purple chips out there and there are three of them in the first three pulls and we're down to the last pull and boom there's a purple chip and yeah 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 i can't believe i hit it on the last one of the game it's full of that sort of stuff all of the time everybody's like come on come on give me that yellow chip i need that yellow chip and it's just it's again, it's just, it is light, it's silly, it's fun, it plays two to five players. If you want just a fun end of the night game, I, I don't know one that's better than this right now. Poser. Excuse me? You heard me. I'm, I'm not a poser. You're literally posing as a bag of chips right now. You're a poser. I'm, I'm a game. I'm not claiming to be a bag of chips. It says bag of chips on the front of you. You are claiming to be a bag of chips. That's the number one thing you're claiming to be right now. Well, okay, uh, yeah, sure, I say bag of chips, but I'm a game first and foremost, okay? Well, other people don't know that. They just think you're a bag, you're giving bags of chips like me a bad name all over the place. You better take that off of you right now, because you better, uh, what, what's happening right now? Just, oh my God, oh my God, no. Uh, oh, tell my bag of sour cream and onion I love her. Most of the time in this series, I'm talking about fairly newly released games, but my number two on my list for September is a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Lunar Rush, and it is so good. In the game, you are mining the moon for resources, 
And the thing I like about it the most is that it, at the same time, it feels both familiar and wholly unique. It's familiar because it's doing the same thing that a lot of games do in the sense that you are getting resources, using those resources to build upgrades, you know, placing meeples down to help you build those upgrades. We've seen that sort of stuff before. It's very fun and very well done here, but it's nothing crazy unique. The unique part of the game is that you are sending resources to the moon and then mining stuff and sending the stuff you mine back to Earth to score victory points. But what's different here is that each route up to the moon and then down actually has multiple different routes. And it's all about timing in this game. There is one route where you can put two things on your ship but you get those things immediately that turn to then use when you are trying to build your upgrades. There is a medium route where you can put more things on your ship. It's five things on your ship, but you have to wait two turns to get those. There's a long route where you can put nine things on your ship, but you have to wait three turns to get those things. So there is a ton of planning in the game. You know, you are constantly thinking about, okay, what do I need right now versus what do I need three turns from now? It, it really does a great job of engaging these different parts of your brain because it's not enough to just think about, okay, I need to build this upgrade right now. No, you have to think about, I need this upgrade now, this upgrade next turn, and this upgrade five turns from now. You have to do that in this game, and it makes it really, really interesting and fun. I, I definitely think it's one to check out on Kickstarter right now, you know? And like I said, it's about mining resources on the moon. So let's hear from a CEO about the game. Bye, bye, bye. Shell, shell, shell. Take the moon for all she's worth, fellas. Neil Armstrong didn't know what he was standing on. This is one small leap for man and one giant leap for my bank account. And my number one game of September is a tie between Cat in the Box and Ghosts of Christmas. What? You can't do a tie. Yes, I can. This is my video. So I am saying these are both my favorite game of September. And the reason I'm including them both as a tie is because they are both trick-taking games. And I love what the board game hobby is doing with trick-taking games right now. I grew up playing trick-taking card games, things like Euchre and Oh Hell, but there weren't that many modern board games that were doing trick-taking until The Crew came out several years ago. And now there has been a flood of really cool trick-taking games, and we're doing some really interesting and unique stuff with the mechanism, and I am here for it, okay? I am a fan of trick-taking. This is trick-taking, this is me high-fiving. Yes, let's keep the good trick-taking games going. Ghosts of Christmas, the thing that makes this unique in the trick-taking genre, is each player has a slot for past, present, and future, and you can be playing tricks into any of those slots which gives the game a real high level of thinkiness because if I play something in the future that I want to be the winning suit, that might not be the case because whoever wins the present timeline will then set the suit for the future. So I have to be thinking about not just what tricks I want to win, but what are other people going to play in certain trick timelines so that I can follow suit or break the suit and try to win that trick. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really, really thinky trick-taking game. It, it might be too much for someone who has never played a trick-taking game because it really warps your mind in interesting ways. But if you like trick-taking games, this one is awesome. And so is Cat in the Box because the difference, the, the unique thing that Cat in the Box does with trick-taking is when you play a card, it doesn't even have a color. What? Yeah, that's like an unheard of thing in trick-taking. You set the color when you decide to play a card. So you can play on-suited, off-suited, all that sort of stuff, but you are picking the color when you are playing the, the card, and then you're building a little bit of an area control aspect 
to the game. You are trying to string different tokens that you're placing out, setting the color for the trick. And if you hit your trick bid, you get bonus points for the largest connected area of tokens. So it is combining area control with trick taking and it's really, really cool, okay? I, I just, yeah, I'm very excited about the modern trick taking games that are in the world right now. Both of these are small box games so they're easy to travel with. I love that about them too. And if you like trick taking or even if you've never played trick taking before, maybe these are worth checking out for you. You know who I wanna cut to right now? Me, because I love tricks and I love trick taking and I am full of tricks, okay? You wanna, you wanna see one? You wanna see one right now? Ah! Ah! Is that a trick? Is that an optical illusion? Am I really doing this with my finger right now? Check out these trick taking games or I'm gonna keep doing this trick forever. That's my monthly video. The best five games, I guess six in this case, of September. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thanks so much for Rado for having me on the channel. I love doing these videos. I love uh, interacting with everybody. So thanks so much. I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Thanks, Grant. And now it is time to click a thing. Click, click.